Stradivarius and his brother Camille and his sister Pandora were walking through the grainy fields of sunflowers that waved in the wind um, through the countryside of Adiver. And so they were looking for a questing beast. And so they go and they come to a forest and when they come to the forest, the sister says, oh, I'm tired. Can't we just rest for a minute, brother? And so the brother says, oh, no, sister. We must find the questing beast of the forest of Antiver. Well, I think that we uh, ought to take a rest, brother, replied Camille. And so they kept on going because uh, Stradivarius was the type who was always in command. Um, he was kind of a control freak. Anyway, so they're going through this forest and they head through this forest and, you know, they sit down to do, to string their bows and then they see it. The questing beast and uh, it's like a like a deer type animal that glows silver and has you know a spiral horn like a unicorn, but it's like got, it's like also shaped in a spiral, if that makes sense. And it's got wings, and so they follow it around um, through the brush, and uh, they track through the muddy ground. And they come to a point where they are going to um, shoot the questing beast. And so the questing beast runs away and it leaves two of its hooves um, on a tree branch, like up to the, um, well, not two of its hooves, but two of its legs. And these um, legs that it leaves there are like glowing bluish silver. And so the Stradivarius um, fires an arrow just to see if it's safe. And he n knocks down um, one of the legs and so they go over and they you know they've been searching for this beast for a long time and for like ages and so they come to the beast and legs and they um they make they're supposed to make a wish so um they both grab one of the legs and that's when these bombs go off that have been set as a trap because the villains know where the questing beast leaves its legs that you wish on. Uh, so they followed it and they found it and then they set a trap for whoever um, actually captured them because it wouldn't give them the the questing beast wouldn't give them its legs. So uh, they these bombs that are set as mines in the ground, um, they're like 
spherical bombs, you know, with the, the thread on top. So they go off and they, you know, there's dust and dirt everywhere. Well, um, the brother, you know, he's yelling and screaming, you know, and he, he makes a wish um, subconsciously not to die. And so um, that's his wish. Um, so he doesn't die. And they fight and they battle uh, these like villains and with swords and the sis or the sister doesn't wish to live and instead she wishes for something else but he has to find out what she wished for um, now that they're free of the villains and they're walking and so they you know they meet everything from you know a talking litter of kittens to uh, you know uh, squirrels that um, hide golden nuts to a lady who um, really annoys um, Stradivarius but um, you know, in her girlfriend, which um, she, you know, kind of is rough and tomboyish, much like, um, you know, and she gets along joyfully with uh, the other brother. So they're traveling along these roads through these villages. You know, they meet uh, this one place where, you know, they have the villagers have no money and that's where and they're poor and the economy's bad you know because like you know and they're all booksellers and they sell antique books and so their uh books are uh what's the word uh you know, are not selling. So anyway, he finds the golden squirrel using the books. And then they, when he comes back through that town, um, after finding the bookworm, which is what he was, the other questing beast that can tell him what his sister's wish was. Um, Cause nothing apparent happened after she wished. Um, the, uh, the bookworm tells him that he already knows what her wish was. Or that he um, wanted it and that she wanted it to remain a secret. Um, so he comes back to the town and the town you know, now that he has um, taught them uh, the knowledge and experience that he's met along the way in some of the stories of like folklore and the golden squirrel with the golden nut and all that, you know, they decide to write a write books about it and so they invent the creative story um, creative fiction and nonfiction, and so they make a lot of money and their books their even their nonfiction um, books get read by people and people fl have flocked to this village and they really like um, the sales pitch that hey, it's creative writing, you know, and anybody can do it and we'll teach you. And uh, all you gotta do is read one, one or two nonfiction books just to see if you like it and we'll help you pick it out because they're also librarians. And so um, 
they then they meet the um, the father of the uh, they travel a ways um, and they come to an old creepy castle and uh, you know there they meet a witch and she answers with a mysterious kind of implied answer that you know don't you see it before your eyes what your sister wished for and uh they leave they're kind of you know confused or whatever they end up going to the town where they grew up in and there is their the girl both girls fathers and mothers and brothers um because they both have a brother um, who was adopted. And so when uh, Stradivarius and Camille end up there, um, Stradivarius is um, finally out of, you know, out of, off from the adventure to find the questing beast. So he's, you know, they're drinking pints of ale and everything and celebrating the return. And so in the marriage of both the brother and two brothers and their sister, or in the girls or the women. And so when they are celebrating this, um, Stradivarius goes off a ways and his wife now says, do you know what your sister wished for? Or something like, uh, uh, are you still worried about what your sister wished for? And he says, no, I think I know what it was now. And that's the end of the story. Um, and, uh, that's it, yeah.